it was announced at the beginning, but the second collection is, that we're doing an annual collection for our diocesan uh, mission, the, the Diocese of Arlington staffs uh, two parishes on the Dominican Republic Haitian border. One is Bonica, the town is Bonica, the other is in Pedro Santana. So that's what the second collection, part of our propagation contribution. In fact, uh, you'll hear there uh, some of our parishioners, not only St. Charles, was, spent 15 days in Bonica, Pedro Santana. And in the future, perhaps some of them will talk to us about the experience, you know, that did kind of a mission trip. Uh, something that's open uh, to anyone, really, uh, through Commission by Christ. I don't know if anyone will admit, but I will admit that sometimes I watch on the, the Learning Channel the, uh, the reality show called Forty Buried Alive. Is there anyone, <laughs> is there anyone willing to probably <laughs> just say it? So. But yeah, if you did, if you were to watch it, you would see your know, pathology at work. Uh, a man or woman who's filled their living place up to the roof with all kinds of, in effect, trash. And uh, so the story, the, the story of the uh, of the show is that they go in and convince him or her to to let them take that it's ruining their lives. The sporting is destroying their life. Their children don't want to come. People they don't want, you know etc. Places a, a, a mess. And if uh, it works out, that somehow they carry the the stuff out, and everything works happily thereafter. But it, it's the kind of the extreme of what Jesus is talking about today, or even what uh, Kohelet in the first reading. Uh, because there is a temptation, not so, that's a kind of pathological, right? I mean, uh, filling everything up is, is kind of maybe a mental illness or something. But, uh, but there is a part of all of us that says, you know, if I just had enough, if I had more than enough, then I could be happy. That's what this parable uh, that Jesus tells. He doesn't say that this man is good or bad. He just simply says that he's focused on himself, right? You know, in the parable, he says he's got the harvest and his main preoccupation is how can he keep this harvest for himself, right? And he's got a problem, as you heard, that his barns, his storehouses aren't big enough. So his solution, true American solution, is build a bigger storehouse. So that he'll, he'll have more. And then he, then he really will. He says, now I have it. I'm famine next year. I don't have to work. I've got enough. I've got enough. Well, you know the end of the story. But there is a temptation on all of our part to say, you know, if my IRA were just big enough. And, and you know, you read the Washington Post business section, they say, you should be, all you 25 year olds, you should be, you know, and stuff. And I, I think it's true. I'm not saying it isn't true. But it can become we, so easily an obsession, right? It can become a dominating. So as, as Colette says, that even he says all the day his days are sorrow and grief for his occupation, this person who's working. Even the night his mind is not at rest. It, it begins to destroy everything. That's what call it. And Jesus instead wants to give us a real liberation. Uh, he wants us to live in a different way. It doesn't mean that we don't, you know, make our bed or go to work cook our dinner. But it does mean that we're not dominated by the concerns in such a way that it drains our life away of all of its, uh, its joy. And that's what the Colossians reading really is talking about. He's, you know, Paul is saying, you know, we were raised with Christ and he died for us to, to set us free from these kinds of obsessions. He named some, he named for, from immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and he says, greed that is idolatry. There, you could fill in other blanks, of course, this is not an exhaustive list, 
But there's so many ways that you or I can, can try to fill in the, the emptiness in our life. Uh, what Paul says is the only real way to do it that fills you with joy and really liberates you is if you allow, put on the mind of Christ. He says, and, and not only does it free you from uh, self-concern, you can stop lying, as he says, to one another. Since you've taken off the old <laughs> self with its practices and put on the new self. In other words, there is, it is your and my birthright in Jesus Christ to have that kind of freedom. Uh, to, the, to be that, to have that kind of joy in our lives. That is what God is offering. Not just in the great by and by, by the sky. But now, even in the midst of looking for a job, trying to get a better, all the things that people, that you and I have to do, even in the midst of that, earning a living, being free of, of the, the binding, crushing concern. And even the, I love the, the way the passage in Colossians ends, because it ends in a very radical way. He says, you, you put on, which is being renewed for knowledge, in the image of its creator. And then he says, here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, free, slave or free, but Christ in all, is all and in all. That's real freedom. See, I mean, the ultimate is not simply to deal with our own concerns and obsessions. That's the good by byproduct, perhaps, of living the life of Christ. But then, all of a sudden, everyone is a sister and brother. The, the distinctions that we make, uh, you know, that separate us from, whether it's ethnicity or religion, or and he names a number, uh, gender or whatever, that separate us from one another, even that begins to evaporate. Because as he says, but Christ is all and in all. The, the ultimate liberation would be not just that we can kind of take our hands, you know, get our fists unclenched from what our obsession is, but that then we're free to see uh, beyond ourselves the, the world is our brothers and sisters. That really is a liberation. And that also is our birthright. There's a beautiful prayer, and I, I was going to bring it, but I forgot. You're safe. You're safe. You don't have to hear it. But Henry Nowen, who was a spiritual writer, he wrote, uh, he wrote a beautiful prayer about releasing your hands, opening your hands, and then being able to accept the world and the joy that comes with it. So my invitation to you is what Jesus' invitation is. Uh, ask Him to give you a different mind, a different heart. Make that part of your prayer tonight before you go to bed. And then expect Him to begin to answer it on Monday morning, tomorrow. Put, put it before the Lord and say, say, Lord, I'm obsessed about this X, Y, or Z. Uh, or I'm not fully liberated. I need that liberation. Look, why don't you, let's put the Lord to the test. Put him to the test in your life. I, I, I don't worry that he's going to fail you. Open your heart as that beautiful psalm says. And, uh, and let's see. See what the Lord can do. And then, when he does begin to answer it, ask him.